Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about money. We will discuss how is money created, grows and destroyed. How is the wealth transferred because of money and the role of money for us and the government. Since the onset of civilization and the establishment of early monetary system, we have been following some kind of a, or the other of what we call commodity based monetary system. Most popular among them was the gold standard of money or the monetary system which was backed by the commodity of gold. Later on came the Bretton Woods system. In this system, all the currencies were linked to the US dollar and the US dollar itself was linked to gold. This was a semi-commodity based system. What were the advantages and disadvantages of this system? The advantages were that it kept a leash on the unfettered government spending as the money supply in the economy was ultimately limited by the physical amount of gold. The malinvestments were quickly corrected because as malinvestments grew, it could not grow further, it could not be papered over by the government because ultimately again the monetary supply was limited. What were the disadvantages of the system? The economy never realize its true potential because as demand for money grew due to the economy growing the banks could not lend beyond a point as the money supply was limited by the gold and government like everyone had to make choices of where to spend the money healthcare or space research or poverty alleviation where exactly because of the limited amount of money the government had. This Bretton Woods system ultimately collapsed in August of 1971 when the US president of that time, Richard Nixon, made the announcement. Today, we are in what we call as the credit based monetary system. It's pretty different from the earlier systems that the society and civilization had used. So how does it work and how is the money created in this system? Well, the person goes to the bank to get some loan. The bank takes what we call collateral from the person. Now collateral can be his inventory or his assets. And in lieu of that correct collateral, the, per the bank gives credit or loan to the money and voila money is created the credit or the loan is the money hence the name credit based monetary system important thing to remember is that here there is no backing of any commodity money is created by banks out of thin air Deposits, unlike uh, earlier, are needed just to balance your books. Deposits are not needed to create money. On the contrary, deposits are a result of the money or the credit created by banks. And that's a very important point to remember. So how does this money grow then in the economy? Well. The person who took that loan earlier from the bank invests and his business grows. He has a bigger business now and so more collateral, there is demand for his product. So he goes to the bank again and with a bigger collateral, the bank gives him a bigger loan and voila, more money is created in the economy. Next, Next is how then is the money destroyed? Let's have a look. The person who took the loan from the bank 
goes to the bank and returns the loan. The bank then writes of the loan and voila, the money is destroyed as simply as it was created, just input of some keys. Important point to remember is, since deposits were created because of the increase in credit in the economy, similarly, destruction of credit in this way can destroy the deposits also if more and more people come and return the money. After this, a very important point is, how is the wealth transferred from one person to another person, one sector to another sector, or one, even one country to another country, using money? Well, let's have a look. Now, as the person goes to the bank to take the loan, however, unlike this time, he is not able to return the loan because there has been malinvestment, bad business decisions that he has taken, or the economy in general has slowed down for his investments to give fruitful returns. Then what happens? The bank takes over the assets in form of, let's say, factory from that person and sells it at a lower price to, re to recover the ba bank's credit to some third party. So in essence, the money has transferred from this person to the third party. The wealth has transferred. Let's take the second case. This time, the factory value or the inventory the person has is insufficient to for the bank to recover the loan. What will the bank do next? Well, the bank will issue some equity and sell it to people. The existing equity holder from the bank will lose money because the bank is selling more equity in the market. The supply of equity has increased. So the existing equity holders have lost. And so the wealth has transferred this time from the equity holders as well. Let's take the third scenario and extend it further. This time, even the equity value of the banks is so insufficient to recover the loans. Then what happens? Enter the government. The government infuses equity into the bank by buying some of its loans. How does it do that? Through the taxpayers' money. So the wealth is transferring this time from the taxpayers or or the bank takes losses on its balance sheets and writes off the loan. However, if the bank does that, then the depositors are losing their money. In this scenario, all in all, everyone loses money and there is a general wealth destruction. Now let's understand the role of money and how is it different between governments and others, others including me and you. For us, money is a measurement of value. We measure how much our assets worth, how much our, let's say gold if we have kept worth using the value of money. So it's much like a scale, like we, may, we measure distance in miles or kilometers. Money is also a medium of exchange. So we buy th things by giving money or we sell things and take money. Hence, it becomes a medium of exchange. Money for us is also a store of value. So let's say we work, we work in a company. We receive salaries in the form of money. We keep that money and that becomes a store of value. We are storing our labor, the value of our labor in the form of money for us to buy things later on with that money. However, it's important to remember that generally money is an okay measure, 
is an okay store of value in the short term but a very poor store of value in the long and medium term. Now, what is the role of money for the government and how is it different for, from us? Government has a monopoly over money supply. Why? Well, because it can print it. And how does it do that? Now, the government issues debt when its expenditure is more than its income. The central bank or the Federal Reserve in case of US buys the debt and how it can do that? Well, it prints money out of thin air and buys the debt and gives that money to the federal government and this is how the government basically indirectly can print money. This in general and modern context is also called as quantitative easing. Also, the government has a monopoly over tax collection which gives its hold over money supply in the economy. So for the government, unlike us, money has no store of value. And why do I say that? Because if you have something that theoretically you can have infinite of, potentially you can have it anytime, would it be of any store of value for you? The answer is, of course not. So for government, money is a measurement of value, like us, as it can, as it's used as a scale to measure its wealth, to measure the accounting, the taxes, etc. It is a medium of exchange, like for us. It buys, it, it buys goods and services through money. And unlike us, the, for the government, money is a tool to allocate resources and transfer wealth. How? Well, money can, government can take money from person A in form of taxes and give it to person B as welfare measures. Or the government can increase the fiscal deficit, that is the debt, print over as you have seen before and give it to person B in form of handouts or spending on health thus transferring wealth. The questions, why doesn't the government do more of it? Why doesn't the government print money, more money? Well, this is because we can hit what we call supply constraints or boundary limits, as they may not be slack in the factors of production, which can cause inflation. Inflation, mind you, leads to a transfer of wealth from poor people to rich generally which is exactly the opposite of the government is intention. Also, you may ask, should the government be spending on space research or on healthcare? Well, this is where things differ. We are in credit-based monetary system and many of the times we don't have to make choice, such choices. Details for all these questions and answer for all these questions you can find in the links in other presentations. The links are posted in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching it. If you like the content, please do subscribe to it and comment in case of any queries. Thanks a lot.